Hey there, my name is Dewey Jones. I'm a Colorado off-roader, and today we are doing one of my favorite trails. We're gonna make a trail guide on Middle St. Vrain and Coney Flat. So I really hope you guys come along because it is a good one. It has water crossing, some rock crawling, and uh, some beautiful views for you. So stick around. All right, let's just get into this. To get here, open up Google Maps, type in Camp Dick, which will take you to Lyons, Colorado, and let Google lead you here. Now that we got that out of the way, we're getting right into the action. We are pulling up to the gatekeeper, our first obstacle. The general rule is if you can't get past this, you should not run the trail. God, I love this thing. Well, I definitely didn't take the right line there, but I do enjoy this gatekeeper. Now, it changes every year, and the looks on hikers and campers' faces when they see vehicles go over it is just something you gotta experience for yourself. Anyway, gatekeepers are obstacles at the beginning of a trail that gives you an indication of later obstacles. So here, this one mimics a boulder garden we will encounter later, but that one is much longer. Also, to do this trail, you and your vehicle should be prepared to ford water. We have quite a few crossings to cross, yeah. And we even have one deep pond to cross a little bit later. What we have been showing you here is typical of the trail following the gatekeeper, but between the more pronounced sections like the upcoming water crossings, as well as that boulder garden. Speaking of that boulder garden, it's one of my favorites as I was solo jeeping now I know I shouldn't be doing that. But when I was solo jeeping this one time I got high centered up there and I basically was stuck. I'll tell you how I got over that once we get there, but for now I think we should probably focus on where we're at, what we're doing right now. Now we are making our way to the first of the water crossings, which are usually muddy water crossings. However, on the way we find this little fun playground area, so we're going to show you that here. Now I don't fully remember this playground area being as pronounced in the past, but maybe I just glossed over it as I was always trying to get to those water crossings because that's one of my favorite areas of off-roading. All right, my sway bar cannot disconnect and I'm aired up. We'll see if I can uh, flex on that. You're gonna need a lot more. Yeah, you're gonna either have to bash your way up that, or air down, or try something else. Well, I'm all for bashing it, but not today. Not until I get the sway bar fixed. The yeah, last time was a bash time. Yeah. Take it easy this time. Yeah, we did good on tin cup. We broke everything. <laughs> Okay, so the trail mills out for a little bit, which I'm going to show you right now, but don't worry, it's just temporary. However, that section I just showed you reminded me of some things that were going on this day. First, we had just filmed the Tin Cup Pass Trail Guide, and if you haven't seen that one, I'd check it out after this video. It's a beautiful trail, but we had a lot of mishaps, including a trail breakdown and recovery. For me, my electronic sway bar disconnect failed and it failed after nine years of abuse. I'm actually pretty impressed it lasted so long as I have always taken this Jeep through deep water since it was brand new. 
Anyway, I was struck with limited articulation as you just saw. If you watched that clip closely, you could see that my front driver's side tire could not make contact with the ground, thus not giving me enough power to get over that rock. Now I had two options, I could have bashed it over it, or I could have gone around it. I chose to go around it as I wasn't really looking forward to another broken down day like Tin Cup. But as you'll see a little bit later, I don't always get what I want. Alright, if you are new here, here's how we make these guides. We show the whole trail in order from start to finish so you have an idea of what you'll encounter when you decide to run it yourself. Now we use both fun treks and trails off-road as source material, however we also include sections that we think are interesting or fun and we have one of those sections coming up that we're calling the Big Rock. Now this video will include all notable obstacles or landmarks but you'll still get an idea of what the trail is like in between those sections. I will use my stock Jeep Wrangler Rubicon to rate the trail although I take into account my experience wheeling with Trailhawks and Forerunners to give feedback on those vehicles also. This video should give you enough information to rate the trail yourself and let you make your own decision. Alright that's just enough talking let's check out this big rock. Although our source material didn't include that section in their books, we definitely thought it was worthy of inclusion and it was a lot of fun. But what did you guys think? Personally, I think that was probably my best bit of off-roading or at least the coolest looking shots of my Jeep on this day. But unfortunately, we did have some technical difficulties. Not a big deal. We're learning as we go and we expect the stuff that we filmed this summer to be way better. Speaking of that, both Zach and I just got done filming two trails in Moab, which should be excellent. I might move them up in the queue and you might see those pretty soon. Anyway, I need to let you guys know what's been going on. I've been slacking on the editing as life has been a bit chaotic. I just moved to Grand Junction for work and I'm finally getting settled in and I'm ready to get into a filming and editing groove. However, if you are on the western slope or if you're visiting Moab, get in touch with me and we'll film some trails. Let's get back to talking about the trail. Now we are still on the middle St. Vrain section of the trail and if you are following along at home, we are approaching the water chutes, which Trails Off-Road has them at mile 2.78 and Funtrex has them at mile 1.4. Now these water chutes can be deep so definitely use some caution. Also there are rocks including big ones hidden by the muddy water so don't just speed through the section or you might cause some damage.
so the first time I did this trail, I was so excited when I found those water shoots, but this became one of my favorite trails after encountering the upcoming and noted toughest part of the trail, the Boulder Garden. Following that is one of the most scenic, deeper water crossings that you'll encounter, and it basically solidified this trail as my go-to local trail. Now I'd wheel this trail often, I'm talking multiple times a summer, as it was one of those that was always fun. However, this is also the trail that resulted me in creating the Colorado Mall Crawler channel using a stock Wrangler for the trail guide. Basically, every time I do this trail, I get stopped by a big Wrangler either before the gatekeeper or when I was pulled off to the side to soak in the sights, I would be told that I was too small for this trail. However, I am all for differences of opinion, that's how you learn, but I know this was just crazy talk and I was watching Peter McKinnon's videos, so this was all the push that I needed to start making videos. I really wanted to show people how much you could do with a stock Jeep. I also told some of my friends about this channel and that's how Sean came on board to show what his Cherokee Trailhawk could do. And we kept getting more and more great drivers like Zach and Justin in these videos. Now the second and probably most important point in making these videos was to show you new trails while giving you info to decide if you want to run the trail yourself. This was also a push for me to stop wheeling the same trails every summer and truly explore all over and that's exactly what we're going to do. Hopefully our video is doing a good job of showing you all the great areas on this trail to just do off-road things. However, we gotta keep it going as we are just a short ways away from the top of Timberline Falls, our next water crossing. So let's go check that out. From the top of Timberline Falls, we have just over a mile ago to get to our next trail feature, the intersection with Coney Flats, which has that boulder garden I've talked about, as well as that deeper, scenic water crossing. Now, I think you all are kind of getting the gist of what the trail is like in between the features, so we're just going to zoom through this mile so I can show you where to turn. Now, if you don't want to go through the boulder garden on Coney Flats, you can choose to go straight instead of turning at the intersection. It is only 0.2 miles to St. Brains of official end, which has a little parking area as well as some hiking trails. It's nice there, but I think the pond crossing on Coney Flats is more scenic, so we're going to keep on going and we're going to have some tasty beverages up there. Now this section I'm showing you now, which is from the turn onto Coney Flats, we are on Coney Flats right now, up to the Boulder Garden, it's steeper than the camera shows. Now it also can be dug out or rutted out as I have been behind vehicles struggling to get up this section. However, it was no issue for our vehicle, so we're just going to zip on up to the Boulder Garden, or what Trails Off Road calls the Large Rock Obstacle. I just don't want to roll. This is Trails Off Road's large rock obstacle, but there's so many rocks here that I like calling it a rock garden, and since I got hung up here in the past, these rocks became boulders. Now in an effort to keep the video moving, I'm just going to show Justin and Zach here. Now Sean wants to do this one, so I'm going to save my footage for when he and I do it, but we'll talk more about this obstacle after wheeling it.
plate, baby. Although Justin definitely took the biggest line here, you can see how a Wrangler's differential can get hung up a little. They're designed to take the hits, but it's something to think about when you're wheeling. Now on this day, I got through it without getting stuck, but it wasn't clean. However, the time I got stuck, I was by myself, so what did I do? Well, simply, I stacked some rocks in strategic places to allow me to free my differential. Although I'm a big fan of solid axles on something like this, you can see why I love the Cherokee. Zach had no problems just bouncing over these rocks, as he did didn't have to worry about high centering his differential. He also has a rear mechanical locker from the factory that helps. So I hope you enjoyed that little segment, but let's get on to the big water crossing and finish this video. be leaving us because he's gonna go hike but we're gonna finish out the trail for this trail guide I'm gonna show you the rest of the trail it's not too bad but there's still some good stuff coming up so stay tuned here we go that water crossing is one of my favorite parts of the trail but not because it's the deepest or longest water crossing we've crossed but because it's one of the most scenic ones. It's also a great place to have a beer, but for now, I'm just gonna show you the rest of the trail in highlight form while I do our trail review. So the route that we took from the gatekeeper to the large water crossing has the best as well as toughest parts of Middle St. Brain and Coney Flats. Our highlights are the water crossings as well as the potential to play on the rocks. Now we agree with the difficulty ratings from Trails Off-Road and Fun Trucks, although we would give it a 5.5 as I'm not quite sure it meets the criteria for a 6. The possible dangers include underbody damage, flat tires, hydro locking, and maybe some pinstriping. In Wranglers, I recommend at least 30 inch tires with full skid plates and rock rails. Now if you are running 30s you may need to take easier lines. For the KL Cherokee Trailhawks and 4Runners I recommend additional off-road modifications like lifts, tires, underbody protection, and rock rails. If you're watching closely you have seen that Zach actually hit his rock rails on that boulder garden as well as a few other places. Now definitely please use your own judgment before attempting and remember video does blunt the difficulty of the trail. Here is our breakdown of the trail, but remember our ratings are subjective, so use the video and your judgment to make a decision for you and your vehicle. This should probably not be your first difficult off-road trail. I'd recommend first running Slaughterhouse without taking any bypasses before trying this one. Since this one is close to Boulder and Denver, it can get crowded, but it's usually not too bad. There is also both formal campgrounds as well as dispersed camping on this trail. As some of you know, I have a little off-road camper as seen in the Rabbit Ears Peak Trail Guide. I would definitely take that on this however first I'd want to fully waterproof it. Overall this is still one of our favorite trails and when Sean and I come back we'll cover the part of the trail we've been highlighting in more detail. However if you can do the trail from the gatekeeper to the large water crossing you can definitely do all of the trail. So this will conclude the trail guide portion of the trail. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to see my breakdown on this trail and our beer review, stay tuned. Now we wanted a unique way of showing a trail's rockiness so we created the beer rating. It's not very scientific but it lets us try new beers and although we don't do sponsored videos, we would take sponsored beer for these reviews. Man, so good, so light and refreshing, very summer beer. Fantastic, highly recommend. All right, I don't know where I've left off or whatever, but basically I uh, had to stop filming 
uh, Coney Flat, so I'll come back and do it later. I knew there was some issue with my clutch when I got it replaced. Luckily, my mechanic is awesome. He said he was gonna take care of it. He's just been extremely busy, so I've been putting it off, which I shouldn't have put it off, but yeah, so I have no clutch right now. But I'm still able to get it home, basically starting it in gear, four low and second gear. And that's how I'm getting off Coney Flats. Now, I'll do some problem solving once I get it off trail. I might be able to feather the gears uh, to get it down to Boulder where Devin is. But yeah, that's what we're trying to do right now is just get this Jeep back. Well, thanks to Justin. Justin helped me get this uh, Jeep, not only in Nederland, but also where my clutch is working again. So I think I'm gonna actually drive this home. All right, after yesterday's little adventure on Middle St. Vrain, my Jeep is back with my favorite mechanic, Devin. He's gonna get it fixed, find out what's going on. It might be the slave cylinder, who knows. Um, but we'll get it looked at, get it fixed. Um, I trust. I don't do the work myself because for one, I wheel it hard, so I want someone that actually knows what they're doing to do the work on my Jeep because I don't like having trail breakdowns, figure out how to get them out, but I definitely would blame myself had that happened and not have um, a real mechanic do my work. So that's just how it is. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, consider watching some of our other videos. Just don't watch those early videos. Those are a bit embarrassing. Spiders, mountain goats, I probably should delete them. Anyway, the next video is coming soon. Well, I hope it is. Thanks for watching. Embarrassing.